every experience that you have and will have upon the earth encourages the alignment of your personality with your soul. Every circumstance and situation that gives you the opportunity to choose this path, to allow your soul to shine through you, to bring into the physical world through you its unending and unfathomable reverence for and love of life. Spirituality is not esoteric. It's not something you have to climb the Himalayas or collect crystal wands to learn how to use. Spirituality is the innate right of every human being on Earth. If someone teaches you a spiritual technique, they are lying to you about the function of that technique. But they're telling you simply what works for them. I have a spiritual technique. You'll never guess what it is. Uh, I play video games. Well, play is a little bit of a reductive word here. Let's turn back the clock a bit. Let's go back to the origins of spirituality and how I went all the way from our traditional conceptions of spirituality to where I am now. When man first found the nature of spirit and began to venture into it seeking answers, he discovered ritual. But what is ritual in the first place? It's not something which has any defined purpose in a utilitarian sense. Um, in fact, it's my belief that as soon as you try to do anything for a specific material purpose, you're actually not engaging in spirituality. The primary purpose of ritual is one of symbolism. It is creating a kind of musical connection between the perceived meaning of ritual objects so as to elicit an effect in the subconscious. The power of ritual, therefore, is not to change reality, but to change one's own perceptions. And with altered perceptions come with it, as a result of the individual's will, a certain level of change that will become manifest in reality. You can think of the ritual as the kindling, which only serves to carry the spark of the individual's personal willpower. Of course, the fire itself is only the natural process of the person's will, but by giving it meaning, you are essentially creating a chamber for your will, which turns something as chaotic as fire into something as ordered as your very computer, powered itself by an array of sparks. So this is the most elementary form of mysticism and has been around as long as humankind has. Taking a purely materialist view of the world does seem to reduce it to a kind of absurdity, a mere play of atoms which organize without any inherent purpose. I'd take this idea a bit further even and say the current materialist scientific dogma has a kind of sterilizing effect on one's ability to put together a picture of reality. So. We should take care to not be overly skeptical to spiritual versions of truth and see them as at least perhaps metaphors for a higher truth yet to be unveiled by scientific means. And in truth, everyone does rituals all the time. Most of them are just so normalized we don't think of them as being rituals. And this, by the way, is the exact same thing as a popularized idea people call the law of attraction, which fundamentally means changing the way in which you see the world to be able to better make use of your environment for your specific goal. So the important thing I'm trying to illustrate here is that there's nothing fundamentally magic about any of this. There's nothing so special about any object, ritual, or practice that is going to have a direct effect on the world in its own right. It's all just plays upon one's own conscious energy and the ability to manipulate and redirect that energy. Beyond this simple form of spirituality, there's also more direct approaches that involve a lot of personal development and rigor. These can be things like meditation, pranayama, which is breath work, yoga stretches, or any other way people have come up with that stresses one's willpower to its limits. These practices are designed in such a way so as to enhance one's ability to stay attentive, which can in turn increase spiritual awareness as well. But what is it about these specific practices that sets them apart from anything else? There's nothing. Any degree of spiritual awareness that comes from these particular practices can be just as well developed anywhere else. Buddhists understand this as well, incorporating the usage of meditation on something as just as useful as the typical notion of emptiness in meditation. And that's what the point of this video is going to be. You can practice spirituality through doing anything you want to do. So how do we define spirituality? I think this topic is one that is vastly misunderstood, especially by people who don't have any kind of cultural background to support their beliefs. Well, to understand, you have to be somewhat willing to part ways with your belief that the world is purely material. The material world is that which is objective, 
that which is measurable, and more broadly, it is that which exists to the perception of all existing entities. I can pick up the rock, so can you. But apart from this, there is also the subjective reality. The key to spirituality is understanding that all events, all living beings, and all of their thoughts and feelings are all connected and that all of this even is encased within the subjective awareness if one is willing to do enough digging to get to the roots of it. Everything that exists in the universe can be found within you, because the whole universe is just a giant series of ripples which all coincided with the creation of your fundamental nature. It's common to believe that it is the objective reality which gave birth to our individual atomized consciousnesses. And while true for the current state of physical material existence on Earth, it is actually originally the subjective reality which the material reality came from. That's right, in the beginning it was not matter that created awareness, but actually the other way around. The way I like to think of it is that the foundation for the universe is experience itself. Consciousness and matter are in a constant interplay of merging with each other and giving life to each other to create existence, and the genesis of reality is no different. There has never once been a reality completely separate from the existence of consciousness. And if science had the whole picture of things, it would understand that already. Science can do a lot of things. I'm not against science in any way. But what I do feel is that our understanding of what science represents has been warped somewhat. What science does is work with the observable universe, but you can't extract meaning out of metrics which are purely objective. Science also only works with systems which are inanimate and isolated from consciousness. So it feels somehow a misattribution to me to think that we can apply that level of thinking to something as abstract as meaning. I feel like in a way the meaning of the universe always has to be inferred rather than deducted. You can only conceptualize of the universe through your own experience, so how can you expect yourself to be able to draw any conclusions about the universe outside of experience? In a universe void of anything to be perceived or experienced, I don't think it's possible to come up with a concept for meaning, which places the burden for a sense of meaning on experiential reality, and being therefore that the nature of experience is endless change, it can only be concluded therefore that meaning is never static. So what I'm trying to say is what science can tell you about the universe isn't going to solve any of your existential woes. The only way you're going to be able to solve that is through living and suffering through the life you were given. If you want to understand the nature of consciousness, you need to explore consciousness. And that's not something science can do. You'll always learn more about consciousness from doing things, like facing your fears, exploring the unknown, and deep introspection, than you will from a microscope. To explain with a metaphor, consciousness is to spirituality as science is to technology. They are the utilitarian function of each's core basis as it is rooted in reality. Uh, science without technology is nothing but pure observation, and consciousness without spirituality is like a train without an engine. A lot of people think spirituality is about finding some kind of meaning or some kind of philosophical notions, uh, but that's not necessarily the case. Spirituality is also just as much rooted in a mechanical kind of sway over reality as our own physical bodies are. And far from being some divine paradise of infinite love and light, the spiritual world is a reflection of everything which exists in the material world. Nor is it the realm of the dead. Rather, it is composed of everything which exists in the psyches of every living creature on the planet and symbolizes our goals, inner motives, and core desires. You will not find a single dead person in the spirit world. To put things very plainly, spirituality is the connective interactivity between consciousness and matter. Part of the reason that science has yet to discover spirituality is because consciousness is the one thing in the universe that is impossible to observe. It exists both everywhere and nowhere at the same time. It exists as the polar opposite of physical matter. By simply existing, your consciousness as well as everyone else's is constantly generating data is being processed by the universe. Every action you take and thought that runs through your head is imprinting itself upon the collective unconscious and altering your fate. Now, the thing about the collective unconscious is that it knows you way better than you know yourself. My personal opinion, actually, is that the Christian concept of God is a direct metaphor for the metaphysical concept of the 
collective unconscious. The only real disagreement I would take with this metaphor is that although personification is an excellent literary technique, God is not a literal entity any more than you are the entire universe. Which, you can believe that if you want, but it doesn't really change the fact that you're you, does it? I don't view the concept of God as something static, as they have... <coughs> I don't view the concept of God as something static, as most religions have limited themselves to doing, but rather something which must constantly alter itself to meet the demands of an evolving universe. Unlike the God concept, metaphysics are a constant across all time, which are what we should seek an understanding of before trying to envision or understand God. Because if you don't understand metaphysics first, whatever your religion is, it's going to adhere first and foremost to dogma. And dogma without holistic understanding always leads to misunderstanding. When we finally collectively have a clear picture of how spirituality works, it should be viewed as fundamentally no different from any other part of life. It is with a lot less mysticism, a lot more sobriety, and clear conversation absent of the typical New Age jargon and a level-headed understanding of its potential as well as its limitations. The most key function of reality is that of duality, the separation between self and other. One can see the interaction of every single object and being occurring in every moment as an exchange between another entity's consciousness and their own. This is no exaggeration. Every action you commit is having a direct impact on the consciousness of another entity in some way. I'm not saying that, for instance, a rock is literally conscious. Rather, think of the rock as being at the center of a net, uh, the strings of which are made up between the connections of every living entity in existence. I'm not saying that, for instance, a rock is literally conscious. Rather, think of the rock as being at the center of a net, the strings of which are made up between the connections of every living entity in existence. What you imprint upon the rock creates a resonance across that net, and though the strings of this net are incredible in length, they are still being pulled and rearranged, and these movements are interpreted as language by the collective unconsciousness's processing. This is the most basic picture of how spirituality functions in a more mechanical sense, an endless network of butterfly flecks. This is the most basic picture of how spirituality functions in a more mechanical sense, an endless network of butterfly effects which work to create a unified reality. And though they seem disconnected, everything is working in tandem, and that goes for your very own consciousness as well. So this collective unconscious, whether you can become aware of this fact or not, is guiding every part of your life along a certain path. And in fact, you can communicate to it, and you can do this in a lot of different ways. Thought, action, intention, and so on. This is the main idea encouraged by prayer, a favorite ritual of Christians. One of the most important things you find in pursuing a spiritual path is that every single thing that happens has its roots in a greater purpose. Now, don't get this confused. Greater doesn't mean to say that all bad things are some net positive in reality. Sometimes the greater purposes are set about by negative forces. But what I am trying to say is that there is nothing manifested which is not, by some route, tied to our own collective will and volition. As we desire the world to be, so shall it be. Of course, life is also about the material reality and not just the spiritual. So it's not necessary to be aware of these things at all times. In fact, it takes the point out of why they even exist nothing more meaningful about the spiritual than there is the material. People have lots of different reasons for wanting to get into spiritual practices. One way of thinking about this is through the lens of Buddhism, which does not just have one path for obtaining enlightenment, but a whole host of possible paths one can take in life. And apart from even those generalities, they also recognize that every person has a unique place in the universe, which comes with it their very own karmic destiny. For instance, a person who lives a life where they have no peace with their own unconscious values and desires will find themselves eventually being in some way haunted by the manifestations of those things. And anyone who wants to have a full understanding of the causes that create the circumstances of life also has to be able to not just look outside to the world, but also within their own psyche. For those who do pursue it, they can quickly find that life is much more rich in meaning 
than they ever imagined was possible. And it's a shame that more people don't, because so many of us have questions like, what is the meaning of life? There's literally no quicker route to understanding this than any other deep philosophical question you can dream of than through developed spirituality. You can always consider the ideas put forth by other people when trying to figure these things out, but if you really want to feel that meaning at a deeper level, you have to be somewhat willing to put yourself out there to find out what actually works for you and form your own unique perspective. And like I said before about ritual, you need to understand that all of these understandings you develop are just meant to increase your ability to interact with and come to harmony with the universe. There's really no higher existential purpose to any of this other than that. So it's a tool, and it shouldn't be regarded as anything more than that. You don't, for instance, meditate for the purpose of meditation itself, but so that when you're finished meditating, you can get up and bring some of that peace you cultivated within yourself into the world. That personal development is vital to your ability to truly understand what the world needs and act accordingly. So what's the fundamental principle for actually learning to engage with all this spiritual mumbo-jumbo? I've said that you can actually do anything and be following a spiritual path, but you're probably thinking, that's nonsense, there has to be a certain method, a specific set of practices, or some kind of trick. But there really isn't. I can give you a few ideas, but I can't definitively tell you what's going to actually work for you. There's no clear-cut answers here. And that's actually a good thing, I think, because it means it's going to lend itself to a greater variety of individuation. But if you want to break into it, all that you have to start doing is find something you can fully devote yourself to. And this truly can be anything you desire. And say to yourself, I'm going to use this as a springboard for developing my personal spiritual awareness. If that doesn't work, try doing it in different ways. Make it more challenging. Try to be more creative in how you do it. Try opening your mind up to what's actually happening within yourself as you're engaged in the activity. You don't have to be enlightened for any of this to work. And I actually think the invented concept of enlightenment is one of the greatest hurdles preventing people from engaging in spirituality. You don't need to be a genius or a monk or anything like that. Spirituality is not even an inherently intellectual or rigorous activity, more so an observational one. And then I guess the other major hurdle is that people will say they don't feel it. Well, probably part of the problem there is that you are taking the ideas of other people for granted and you're not finding out what works for you. You're adhering to traditionalist modes of thinking. Many people's ideas of spirituality may have worked for them at the time, but they may not work for you now. That's just how things are. I believe that a correct view of spirituality should be able to realize that things change, people change, and to be able to effectively change and adapt with them. When I first started really engaging in spirituality, I thought it was in some way a requirement that I had to be straining myself or putting myself through unnecessary suffering in order to make any real progress. This actually ended up holding me back, ironically enough. There's nothing inherently spiritual about suffering, so don't let yourself be convinced of that. In fact, you'll be better off if you're having fun in whatever you end up doing, because if you can do something that is both fun and expansive of your consciousness, that is something you can maintain for a long time. That said, don't be overcautious in preventing yourself from trying things more taxing, if you're truly motivated to challenge yourself because those things can be the most rewarding if you're passionate enough to overcome them. And these things don't have to have any significant meaning to anyone or anything outside of yourself. All that matters is that you feel to have an innate sense of meaning, and that you yourself can fully appreciate your own efforts put forth in the practice. I think the hyper-emphasis on meditation has been a detriment to spirituality. Though it can certainly help you connect with inner worlds, it's simply wrong to believe that spirituality is only found within. I hardly even register meditation as a spiritual practice, really, and the amount of mental energy that has been devoted to understanding and perfecting it has been an utter waste of human potential. What meditation actually is, is more of an antidote to overstimulation, which to be fair, a lot of us are today. But if you have to force yourself to meditate, you probably aren't actually overstimulated. That's the attachment to suffering mentality. And I would reiterate that there is no intrinsic link between suffering and spirituality more than there is suffering and anything else. In the Eastern tradition, they emphasize a link between practices such as martial arts and spirituality. But let me ask you, if one can have a spiritual experience in practicing to become better at physical combat, why would it be different for someone who is putting their focus into training for anything different, like a video game? The truth is that anything can be a spiritual experience if you are doing it with a deep level of devotion and discipline. 
I do everything in the game at the highest possible difficulty. There's nothing easy about this. Something people don't realize is that games actually teach you things. Not just simple reflexes either. There's a lot of calculation and even intelligence that goes into being able to play a game at the highest level. And it's been proven scientifically that video games can keep your brain sharp enough to even prevent things like Alzheimer's and dementia. So it's not some net negative or time sink like you've been taught it is. I know that video games are synonymous with laziness and addiction, but it's important to recognize the value any person gets out of a thing is dependent on the limitations they set for themselves. It's not that the task itself is lazy. Rather, laziness is the product of people who do things at a low level of consciousness. But as I've been trying to explain, the point of your spiritual development is to be able to do anything and everything at the highest possible level of consciousness. If you're going to exclude something mundane like video games from this notion, then you're intentionally blinding yourself to a part of reality, and therefore a part of yourself. Spirituality in actuality is a concept that goes beyond every facet of reality as you know it. So if you think you have a full grasp of spirituality, purely off of what you have a personal preference over, the universe is laughing at your expense. The only key aspect to this really is, are you developing a sense of mastery over yourself and your environment? Everything else is just the noise society makes out of a defiance of things it doesn't understand. In the process of growth, a person's spiritual ability will come down to three important factors. Your ability to maintain a perspective of wisdom, how much difficulty you are capable of managing at any given time, and to what extent you are willing to do whatever it takes in defense of your beliefs. The more you develop yourself along these lines, the more the universe will test and try you to see if you can follow through and fulfill its higher will for you. And if you really take this seriously, you should know that getting into spirituality is something that will not only challenge you massively, but will also change you at the most fundamental level of your consciousness. Unfortunately, the New Age movement made a lot of people view spirituality in some kind of airy-fairy way, which to me is a refusal of the deeper nature of reality. This completely glosses over the enormous psychological turmoil that underlies genuine spiritual growth. In reality, spirituality does not deviate in any significant way from nature itself. It can be brutal, beautiful, loving, and everything in between. But most importantly, it simply puts on display for you the greater concepts of universal truth. It's not a toy, it's not going to hold your hand, and it's definitely not about submitting to some higher power. I don't want to say that spirituality is not for the faint of heart, because it's not. That too is a misconstruing of truth. Through the honed analytical lens, it is simply a greater understanding of your personal relationship to universal principles. All that I've described to you thus far is the true science of the will, and everything that is spiritual is simply learning how to become self-aware of these principles, so that instead of being subjected to the tide of reality, you can become an active participant in it and start paving your own life path. If you learn how to do this properly, you can start to see every single thing you choose to do as a spiritual act, and learn to use that level of awareness to steer yourself through life. Will is the most fundamental thing in all existence, and someone who fully masters and understands its concepts can learn to overcome nearly any obstacle. Although I did say anything can be spiritual, and you should keep this in mind as you progress in your own journey, it definitely helps at first to have some kind of a steady practice or concept to be working with. This can be a bit like starting to create something in pottery. But you have to give something a general shape first before you can start to refine and take things exactly where you want them to be. Doing this is not actually difficult. It's the first misconception you should discard from your mind. Succeeding in spiritual practice only requires a will to believe and consistency of effort. But otherwise, anyone can achieve it. Once you pass a certain point, I feel, the notion of proof becomes entirely superfluous. Make no mistake, spirituality will always affect your life. It's not escapable. But if you can become conscious of it, you can awaken an entire part of your awareness that you never knew existed, which can only increase your ability to experience and interact with the world, and even after enough time, start to give you a sense of your purpose of existence in this lifetime. And at the highest state of spiritual awareness, you can actually program your own fate into existence just by thinking. While it is true that as materialist forces increase in importance in our lives, the spiritual forces tend to dwindle. This is the natural balance of things, though the pendulum always eventually swings the other way, and after a period of significant material excesses, people do eventually tend to settle down into their inner worlds and discover a more intrinsic sense of personal meaning. 
So I think that as we begin to catch up to all the recent boons of technological advancement, and those advancements start to slow down in amplitude, as they are doing now, we will start to see a resurgence in importance placed on living a spiritual life. And this is, truthfully, our destiny as a species. We've been resisting this for so long because it's so hard for us to imagine a world that goes beyond division and self-serving tendencies. These things are so natural to us that we hardly realize our own capacity to hurt each other. And instead of working towards reconciliation, we unconsciously are using pain and conflict as a basis with which we create meaning in our lives. But you can't be a spiritual person and avoid the consequence of having a true knowledge of the way things are. And when you start to wake up to that, you start seeing how we create cycles of pain in every moment of every day. If you're complicit in it, I'm complicit in it too. But I'm working to not be. And you know, I had something occur to me while writing this. There's so much utter BS in the world today, I imagine to a lot of people, spirituality just seems like some hocus pocus nothing. There are too many mounting threats in the world to think about anything like this. The problem with that line of thinking is that all you're really doing is feeding into the mass panic and fear in the world. There's nothing inherently revolutionary about worrying over things you can't control. And I would go even further than that and say that participating in ritualistic fear-mongering is actually digging our graves even deeper. Do take time to work on yourself and bring yourself to a state of high knowledge and self-mastery. And I know some of you need to hear this loud and clear. Worrying about the world is not your responsibility. And I know this is going to sound like some kind of perverse Ayn Randian kind of philosophy, but if you can actually improve yourself, meaningfully. Not just in some surface level type of improvement that appeals to your ego. The world itself will elevate to a higher state almost by pure osmosis. I am absolutely certain of this fact. and I don't believe anyone should have to be depriving themselves of personal growth for the sake of a world that honestly is too far mired in dogma to be able to make the right kinds of change that would make all of our lives better. We will get there eventually. But for now, make use of your time to become more than you imagined you could be. Alternatively, you could tell me this is all just a lot of nonsense and the ramblings of someone who's totally lost it. I'm sure you'll get me to change my mind if you structure your argument well enough.